Hello and welcome to The Change Cafe with Jay. I'm your host and in this session I'm talking to the wonderful Evelina Dimanava Chute, leadership development consultant, trainer and wellbeing coach, badass mama and founder of the Elite Mind Academy. Evelina uses neuroscience to bridge the gap between organisational performance and individual well-being. And in this coffee chat, she talks about why we're feeling so lost, how our brains are shaped by our experiences and how we can better manage our minds, emotions and well-being right now. I am so excited to share this interview with you. So get your coffee, shampers or cocktail and get comfy. So, Hi, Jake. Pleasure to be here. Now, it's a bit of a weird time at the moment, and I know this is your area of expertise, so I'm so excited to talk to you today. Um, I think that having read a lot about you and we've spoken a couple of times, you've got quite an interesting background, so I really want to start there. Well, um, I'm originally from Lithuania, and I came here, um, I came to London without speaking the language, and I haven't planned to stay here at all. I thought I'm coming here just for short summer holiday, a couple of months, uh, maybe learn a bit of a language, maybe maybe work a little bit. And then uh, with my boyfriend at the, at the time, we got ourselves into a very tricky situation where we couldn't really come back. And I made the decision that because I was stuck here, I, I was determined to um, make something out of the situation that because I left so much behind, I have to create, you know, my career and I wanted to have my family and I wanted to have education here and I wanted it all and I wanted it all now. And, and off I went to have those crazy, crazy few years where I, I literally slept um, four hours a night and I was studying full time and working a uh, few separate jobs and had a child and all sorts of uh, possible things imaginable um, to get my life back on track. Yeah. And it didn't feel like I'm doing enough because um, I guess I felt guilty for leaving my country, for leaving my family unexpectedly. And I felt like I want to give back. I want to do something more. I want to contribute. Now, Lithuania is one of those countries that has the highest suicide rates in the world. So my way of giving back was to go and volunteer for charity that works with suicidal people. And it was there really that it hit me. Uh, there was this moment where I was sat in the front of the person who you look at him and you think, well, this guy got it all. He's got a family, he's got a career, he's got good looks, he's got prestigious job and all of these things. And then yet there he was in this respite center for suicidal, not wanting to live. And I was there, on the other hand, in a foreign country, not speaking the language, <laughs> you know, starting building my life from scratch. And I never felt that way. So I was really curious. That kind of spawned that question, what was the difference? What's the difference between someone like me who can take on whatever happens to them and say, yay, you know, <laughs> there's the challenge. Let me grow with it. Let me see what I can learn. And then somebody else who actually have all of their material things in place and yet the slightest thing that knocks them off the balance and they end up stressed, depressed, anxious, um, off sick with work or not even wanting to live. And, and the answers I really find in, um, I've, I've started with psychology and NLP and, and um, it was never enough for me. And um, I went on to study um, neuroscience and interpersonal neurobiology that really explains the difference how our mind and brain uh, is shaped by our experiences and it's really not what happens to us that makes a difference you know between success and, and failure but what lessons we take out of it wow and, and um yes yeah, so i've been working for a long time then i kind of made made that that mission for myself to help everybody who's vulnerable who needs support and i've been uh, um working, volunteering mainly, uh, helping people who are suicidal, anxious, stressed, depressed, um, helping them to, to, to integrate back into normal life. Um, and at the same time as well, I was building my own 
career. Um, I was working for Preta Manger for a very long time in, in, and worked myself up to senior management position. I was part of their uh, pioneer project team that was in charge of uh, Pret expansion beyond London into smaller regional locations. So I had all of the leadership and management experience there. I was responsible for training new managers, developing new leaders, developing new business models and adapting it to, to the local environment and so on. So I had those uh, two very different ex experiences, like one very high, high pressure and successful environment and another one with very vulnerable people on the other hand. And well, all sounds great, right? But um, at some point I did uh, working like this, crazy, crazy hours. Uh, I did collapse at work without being able to breathe, uh, wasn't able to walk, been taken to E&E and um, they just discharged me as, as, as if nothing happened, as if it's some sort of stress and uh, uh, you know overload of work and just a, a while later I found out that I had a huge tumour and I had this big tumour growing inside my back, inside my chest, pushing into my lungs and obviously the night before your operation where you say sign here for all the consequences of the operation including your own death <laughs> you really reevaluate right okay i've created all of these amazing things in my life right I, cr I created my life from scratch in a foreign country but at what cost you know i sacrificed my own health i sacrificed time with my family and um obviously working for the company didn't seem right uh, anymore after that and and I set up uh, my own company Elite Mind with that goal uh, of bridging the gap between those two extremes that I've experienced in my life so that very successful high driven performance business environment and also that personal well-being and it's it's really really my mission today to to through the training and consulting and well-being strategy that, that I, I help to create for the organizations and leadership development is, is to um, help businesses to create that high level business performance, but in a way that looks after individual well-being of each person there. Absolutely. And I think that that's what I love about your work, that not only do you combine the academic side with your experience in business, you've you've climbed the ladder, you know what that experience is like, you know what politics means. Um, but also this background story that you have um, of success and at what cost and is it meaningful in the end? You could be as productive, as efficient and as successful as you want, but for what? And there has to be that for what? There has to be that reason, that purpose. Um, I want to read something um, that you put out on social media um, that I absolutely loved. And I, I just wanted you to talk around kind of your meaning behind it. Um, okay. But there was, and there's a few of these, so we'll, we'll, we'll spread them out. But it was, don't let the excuse of the current situation stop you from traveling to your desired destination in life and business. And this was something you put out on LinkedIn. It really spoke to me because I think I, I can think about a lot of times in my life where, you know, something, you know, I didn't get, a, um, I didn't get the pay rise or I didn't get the promotion or something happened. And it was all I was really doing was kind of finger pointing and blaming mm -hmm. my environment and blaming everything around me. And I could so easily do that now, right? I could so easily think, well, what is the point? I, I think really if, um, you know, anything that, that I would say is if, if you have a good excuse for not doing something, don't use it. We create all of these brilliant excuses that keeps us in our comfort zone, that keeps us to what we know, that keeps us safe, safe from judgment, safe from criticism, safe from, uh, you know, perceived rejection and all of these kind of psychological safety boundaries that we create for ourselves that as soon as we, we bump into some sort of obstacle outside, we stop and we internalize and we think like, oh, you know, I'm not good enough. Uh, you know, why this always happens to me and all of these negative criticism and in reality, it's, it's, it's supposed to be about the mindset of, okay, that's the feedback. 
this way didn't work. So what else can I do? How else can I achieve it? And especially for the for the businesses now as well, I'm 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 giving that message that we shouldn't change what we do. We should stick to you know our personal vision, mission, business goals, whatever that is that that uh, that drives us in life, and just change your how. It's just because the circumstances are different. It doesn't mean that we, we have to completely stop and bury our heads in our sand and kind of hibernate and, and wait for things to go back to normal because there, there will not be <laughs> the same normal as we know it. Absolutely. I'm so glad you touched on this, this normal concept because what we're seeing now is VUCA at work, right? It's a volatile environment. Um, but this is only going to continue change and uncertainty in the workplace is only going to continue so we all know that we find uncertainty difficult but yeah. why why do we find uncertainty difficult and how do we manage this kind of people have described it to me as this like roller coaster of emotions like they're up mm -hmm. they're down they're crying they're stressed what is that about and what can we do about it? Yeah, well, uncertainty specifically, uh, this goes down to uh, kind of evolutionary uh, heritage that we have and how our brain has evolved to survive. If we think of it, now a lot of problems that we have in our society, they are created by the so-called evolutionary gap between our um, neurology of our minds and, and bodies, so how we physically have evolved to survive, and the social evolution of our environment. So, you know, last couple of hundred years, the advancements and, and, and changes have been so quick that there is no way we can adapt to that. And we are creating a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure on ourselves simply because people don't know how our mind and bodies uh, have been designed to work in the first place. So I, I study a lot about evolutionary neuroscience. It really explains how we relate to environment. And we really have just three basic needs that, that we are built to, um, um to, to to drive us and first is our safety and survival so of course every uh, life being is interested to survive to to reproduce to 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 pass the heritage and and just 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 to really to be alive and anything that is familiar will be in, interpreted by our brain as safety because if you've already been here if you've already seen it and if you've already done it and nothing dangerous happened, you know that it's safe. So that's where we have safety or perceived safety from creating habits, routines, from building familiar environment around us. And that, that helps to, to balance out that, that, that uncertainty. So if you don't know something, you're not sure whether it's safe, you don't know. And it's, it's, it activates some of those primal uh, survival impulses. We become much more irritable. We become much more um, um, craving for, you know, for sugar and, and fast energy. It's, it's all sort of different behaviors. Now, our, um, let's say, part of the brain that, that consumes the most energy, which is prefrontal um, uh, cortex, which is that human part of the brain, is the most energy um, consuming part. So if our survival is threatened, then that part of the brain receives less energy. And we are driven by some of these more primal impulses when we find ourselves into that um, unfamiliar environment and surroundings. So um, yeah, the basic need is one is that, that safety uh, and survival. Uh, the second one is opposite. It's, it's actually evolution and growth. So on one hand, you want things to be the same. You want things to be um, settled and familiar. On the other hand, you want some sort of novelty and excitement and learn something new. And, and you don't want to just sit where you are. You want to grow and learn. So there are all these, these contradicting needs there. And, and when your survival is in certain perceived level of th threat, as it is at the moment, then 
the other ones get compromised and then the third need is affiliation and this is that sense of belonging and being part of the group for millions of years we would have not been able to survive on our own so any social exclusion feels life threatening to us and that's that's where sometimes we hear we we have a lot of negative chit chat especially women um, and all of this criticism saying i'm not good enough I don't, I don't fit in, I have to be the same, I have to belong, because for millions of years that was the only way to survive, you have to fit in, you have to belong. And obviously it's not true now in a modern environment, so there is that kind of conundrum between evolutionary needs and, and the society needs that we've created here, and, and if we understand how our, how our mind works, we can utilize those drives in, 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 in this, in this mo modern world as well. And, and you talk about perceived threat and perceived safety does it go then that if we create environments where we feel safe even if it feels fake we could trick our mind to thinking it's safe or to 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 experiencing that safety and therefore that will help us in that situation absolutely that's where simply by creating familiar environments. So for example, having specific space from where you work, specific place where you sleep, specific place where you eat, you're creating a lot of familiarity, creating habits in terms of timing. So when do you do what? What is your automatic routine that you follow? That you can trigger that brain into, into that mode of, uh, mode of safety. And also you're saving a lot of energy this way. So then you have more uh, brain energy for some other things, that evolutionary drive that looks at, okay, so what else is possible? What else I can learn? Uh, and instead of thinking, can I do this or not, which most of the time, of course, your brain will talk you out of it. Instead of asking that question, you should say, okay, so what I would like the outcome to be and how can I do it? So by simply asking how, you're not even providing your subconscious mind to talk you out of it. You just, you are looking at a solution and outcome and future focused um, alternative to that, which, which really, really helps. How do they deal with all of the pressures that they're getting from up above to make decisions to to you know uh, certainly from um so for example from a marketing perspective you know we need messaging about this we need to get you know we need to move quickly whilst feeling this kind of anxiety high stress um and also having to be good leaders from those they manage yeah. what would your advice be about kind of getting in the right frame of mind i suppose First of all, is actually managing your own level of stress and knowing that you don't come from reactive uh, place because under too much pressure, it's very easy just to react rather than act with logic and action. So that stress management is very, very important. And, and I do actually, for that reason, include um, um, heart, variabil heart rate variability testing for all of my coaching clients that they can actually understand their own stress response and have insights into their sleep and, and all of that. But obviously you don't need to have that technology. It's really three simple things uh, that you need to manage that stress is first, how often do you get stressed and for how long? And with that, you're looking at, okay, what is triggering you? What are those triggers that get you um, into that, that stress response? And if some of it is out of your control, then we just need to learn to let it go. Then second thing is once we do get stressed, and stress can be a good thing. It can help us to um, overcome the challenge that is there ahead of us. And that's the stress response that it evolved initially for. So, so there we're looking at, at to what extent do we need to activate our stress response? Do we activate that stress response to the point as we think like, oh my God, there is a lion here and I'm just about to be eaten alive and your body switches on all of that kind of instinct survival mechanism or you think, okay, here is a lion, but I'm stronger, I'm faster, I'm more clever, I'm bigger, I'm gonna win this. And therefore your, your mindset will switch on completely different um, mechanisms in your body to prepare you to overcome the challenge. And the, 
the final bit is okay so how do you rest how do you once all of the stress is gone how do you go back to, to that, that basic equilib equilibrium of your body how do you restore your energy and and really it's, it's key to learn to, to manage your stress response once once you have that, then in, in the working environment and all of this kind of politics and, and games that, that people, people often play in, in, in management circles, um, it's, it, it all goes down to communication. So communication, it's, it's three, three things really that we need to be focusing on. So what is it exactly that we need to do, why we need to do it, and how we need to do it. And to the people above, it's very, very important that we are very clear on their what and on their why. So, so that we understand from our senior leadership, okay, so what is it exactly that the company is trying to achieve? What is the vision? What is it exactly that we need to do? And why? Why is it important? So we can tap into that mission and represent that. And and again, those two things, we need to be able to communicate to our, uh, to people who are below us, those who are we expected to lead. So we can translate that vision to our teams in a way that it relates not only why the company needs to do it and why it's important for the company, but why is it important for that person? So why it is important for that person who needs to do this task, why is it important? And the how, that's where it becomes flexible because I think it's very, very important that we find our own how as leaders. So I know the vision, I know the mission, I know that's, that's what, what we need to do and why we need to do it. But the how should be left to individual managers and, and, um, and we should be always looking for better ways of doing things. And it's, it's, that's where it's very healthy to also challenge upwards to question for clarity to say okay do i understand correctly is this exactly what we need to do is this exactly why and question why so you understand that because if you don't understand that vision yourself how are you expected to communicate to others Absolutely. so the company's what and companies why is crucial to understand and communicate and how that's where you can challenge your seniors and say actually there's a better way of doing that that's where you can come with your own ways of how you're going to deliver those results with your team and also give freedom to some of your team to come up with their own ways of doing things better so they feel valued, they feel that they can contribute and, and so on. Absolutely. And I think that sometimes as managers, I've been a manager and I've done this myself, we can take a lot of that onto our shoulders and feel the pressure to have all the answers and and work it all out and we need to we need to have our shit together and actually mm -hmm. it's really about utilizing the resources that you have in your team communicating and collaborating because that's also going to give them a level of control choice certainty that will help them to alleviate their anxieties being of control uh, that each person needs to have something that they're in charge of, something that they're in control, something that they are learning, and they still need to feel like they're belonging. So again, going back to those three basic needs, right? We need safety. So people need to know what is expected of them and why is it expected? And they need to have specific level of, of familiarity and routine and their ways of working and security in the job. But they also need to be given their own opportunity to grow, to learn, to explore, to contribute and to feel like they are part of the bigger group. So they are um, belonging to that community with a shared values, shared vision and, and, and have, have their back, whatever happens. Yeah. So absolutely, and communication is a key and, and the, the best way to lead is really coaching approach to help each person to come up with their own resources, their own answers. Because like you said, of course, sometimes we feel like, oh yeah, I've been there, I've done this. So I know better. Um, but when we just tell people what to do, it will save time in a very short term. But then that person will be forever reliant on you yeah. for their problems and solutions. And it's not good for your development. They're working more and more. Um, so this last one um, is something that I've 
heard come up time and time again and in different ways so it's this sense of a loss of identity it's this kind of kind of feeling that they're not able to be themselves or they're not presenting themselves in in the way they want to and they're kind of going away and kind of thinking oh why did I do that um but also feeling a sense of identity say if they've their role is changing or they've been made redundant or they're on furlough they suddenly feel like they're not valued and their their whole identities are being questioned I wondered if you had any thoughts about what was what's going on behind that well, I think really we live in a society where that term identity and, you know, authentic self is, is giving a lot of, uh, it's been given a lot of attention and it's, it's like it's expected of you to know who you are, where you are, know your passions, know your authentic uh, strengths and values and so on. But in reality, the, the world doesn't work this way. The, the brain doesn't work this way. Um, there is my favorite quote by Charles Darwin, and he said, it's not the strongest nor the most intelligent that survive, but the one that is most adapted to change. And I think this is so true, you know, not necessarily from evolutionary point of view, but in a modern environment as well. It's like, yeah, there is this environment. Yes, there are all these changes. And if we think that, yes, I have this identity, it becomes a box with a label on it, right? That's who I am. And we are not able to see beyond that. Now, suddenly you take this box, you put it in a different environment. Well, it doesn't fit there anymore, does it? So how can we eliminate those boundaries of this is who I am, right? This is my only identity. I'm a manager, I'm whatever role I am. It's, we are so much more than that. We need to be able to be fluid and adaptive and what I call identity evolution, uh, be able to adapt to whatever the needs in our environment are, right? So imagine when I came to, uh, to London for the first time, right? I could say, oh, okay, so uh, this culture, I don't understand the language, I don't speak, you know, I, I cannot have any experience or anything that I thought I am, doesn't serve me in any way, well, I don't belong here, I don't feel here, let me go back. And if I have done that, I probably would have lived very average and very simple life. Mm -hmm. But it's when we challenge ourselves to grow up to the environment around us, that's where our identity becomes so much more than we even think we are. Because who are you, right? You don't know that until you push your boundaries and explore all these different edges of yourself and, and challenge yourself and, and, and grow with it. Absolutely. I love that, that we are more than just the title that an organization has given us. We're more than Absolutely. just the, the accreditations that we've achieved. Like, yeah. Um, so there are two more quotes that I, I'll probably be quoting you for, for, from now on, <laughs> on these ones. Oh, I love it. <laughs> really love it. So there are only two mistakes on our journey to success, not getting started and not going all the way. I just love it <laughs> so much. I really did. This, this idea is actually comes from Buddhist philosophy. And it's really about their approach to, 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 to life and challenges and seeing the journey as, as if it is, you know, climbing a mountain, for example. And it's, it's really understanding um, our own limitations and looking at all of those things get, that can stop us and not allowing that to be uh, a limitation. Um, going regardless, if you have some sort of impulse, curiosity, um, just you know, just decide the, the destination and, and set off on your journey. And, and of course, if you have made that, that, that decision, then travel until you know that I've arrived. Because a lot of people are kind of, um, you know, searching for themselves or the life, not giving their full energy to explore what is possible, playing it safe, playing it small, and never really giving a chance to themselves to see what is, what is truly possible. So it's really, really about sometimes, you know, 
being bold and 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 going for it and giving your all yeah and if this is now the opportunity more than ever to to you know think about that reflect on that and and go for it um so my last one today's mm -hmm. crisis is a challenge for some and an opportunity for others what's the difference my question that i've been researching for for more than 10 years is exactly that what's the difference like we have now this crisis scenario why certain people will uh, stand up out of it and and make the challenge and others uh, will will give up and just 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 wait wait in fear and it's it's really a lot to do with our our mindset and how we see the situation to be able to be solution focused to be able to uh, have a uh, focus on what is in our control rather than um, paying attention to things that we have nothing to do with yeah. and and worrying about that and also what actions are we taking with things that we have control over so what resources do we have it's very easy to end up in the situation and say oh you know i'll wait for um government to pay my my rent i'll i'll expect you know nhs to do something more to save more more lives and um you know all these scientists should hurry up creating this miracle cure right you're like giving up your power expecting somebody else to do something for you but that's the whole difference is looking at okay what can i do what's in my control how can i do it and i think the biggest um thing that can help is just just what questions we ask to ourselves right if you want better answers you should ask ourselves better questions and instead of asking can i do this or can i not do this just ask how well how and you you you'll find the way and and of course a lot of our mindset and and a lot of our behaviors and habits are created in our past created in even our upbringing in our uh, the way our, the way our parents raise us and, and and the lessons we take out of it and um but i always say that um it, it applies to parenting but it also applies to to the way we lead our teams in management praise the action not the child mm -hmm. so imagine you have a child and the child brings you a um, little um, drawing and you'll say oh a good girl you've done a great job you are amazing i love you so much and you think that we are doing the great job in praising the child but now what happens the child grows up finds some some job or some some other failure happens in their life now when they did well they believed that i'm a good girl and i'm a good person but now something bad happened guess what's going to happen in the subconscious mind i'm a bad person i'm not good enough i can't do this yeah because we learned through our journey to um personalize our failure so we cannot uh, so we be, we become identified with that with that part of, of failure so if something didn't happen it's because i'm not good enough if something didn't go my way it's because i'm not able but now imagine some other person does a drawing brings it to their parents and they say you've done the very nice drawing and this drawing is really nice because you worked very hard you were very patient you paid attention to detail you have redone this so now the child knows that their effort is because of what they did and not of who they are so when something else happens to them in their life so all of these external challenges that we are not able to uh, have any control over right there's an uncertain situation now we are not taking that oh this this is happening because i'm not good enough and i'm in this situation because i've done something wrong it's just simply like okay this way didn't work how can i do it differently so it becomes a um, different type of approach that we are looking at addressing our challenges and obstacles in our life and we are not taking it personally yeah. and that's the key in in creating that bulletproof mindset and that's exactly what we should be kind of reminding ourselves when we are giving feedback to our our teams when we are leading uh, others are you praising the person and making them feel good 
but actually doing more harm in the long term? Or are you actually evaluating them uh, on their performance, on their specific behaviors with very specific things, what they can adjust and what they can do better to achieve better results? I was just saying <laughs> every word there. I was like, oh my God, that's me. Oh my God. <laughs> that is incredible. And I feel like this is a whole nother discussion that we could get into at a later day and we can delve into some of these things. But that was so amazing. So tell us where people can find out more. Um, so I'll direct people with links, but where's the best place to find you, interact with you, hear more of this beautiful gold? <laughs> Well, my website is elitemind.co.uk. So there you can find a little bit more information about my, my services and, and what I offer. If you just want to interact with me a little bit more, follow some of my insights and, and, uh, um, and, and get some feedback and just, just interact overall, then LinkedIn is best place to find me um, as I don't really use social media very much, but uh, I, I do use LinkedIn. So yeah, I hope, I hope we can connect there. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm sure we're going to be back soon with another hot topic. So thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thank you for having me.